All right, it's time to make another video where I talk about old, bygone, super niche Roblox games. Here's the obligatory joke where I poke fun at how it's a bad idea. Roblox is a platform that's constantly evolving. As time goes on, the formula for what makes a game successful often changes. As a result, certain types of games are deemed monetarily unviable, resulting in them being passed over by both the players and the developers in favor of more accessible alternatives. Oftentimes, accessible doesn't mean creatively ambitious. It just means that a toddler can play it. The games that I'm listing in this video are mainly multiplayer horror games, except you get to actually shoot the monster. You get to actually do stuff that doesn't just consist of Finding objects in a maze, or holding E. You know games like Dead by Daylight, I mean, Flee the Facility, and Daybreak? You, you like those games, don't you? Well, what if I told you that in 2013 to 2016, but mostly 2014, the Roblox horror genre was chock full of that. You wouldn't believe me. Your head would blow. You wouldn't even be able to edge to that information. I'm Bredian, and I talk about niche Roblox games, and in this video, we're going to be revisiting a forgotten era of Roblox games. Games that used to rule the front page. Now, they sit dormant in the back rooms of the Roblox search function. In other words, I'm about to show off my top 5 asymmetrical multiplayer Roblox horror games that are dead list. As always, be sure to suplex that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications to be sure that you don't miss any of my future videos like this one. Also, check the description to play the games for yourself. Alright, with that off my chest, now we can get into the video. Number 5, God. Don't Blink. Starting off at number 5, we have Don't Blink. Don't Blink was a multiplayer, round-based, asymmetrical horror game based around the modern classic Doctor Who episode of the same name. For those of you who don't know, which is probably a lot of you since this episode came out in 2007, Doctor Who used to actually be a genuinely great television show. The titular episode centers around this girl, who has to deliver the TARDIS back to the Doctor. And then there's like, these weird statues that come to life and try to kill her, called the Weeping Angels. The Weeping Angels are basically the original SCP-173. They move incredibly fast, but can't move if they're being observed. This episode introduced the concept well, and made Weeping Angels a really big thing in pop culture from what I can remember. The whole gimmick of creepy statues was used well, and the fact that they have to cover their eyes to avoid looking at each other is terrific. They would return years later in other episodes, where they added some really dumb gimmicks, like how any image of an angel can become an angel, and also that bit where they snap people's necks. Every subsequent appearance beyond the first was basically just ruining the Weeping Angels' mystery and scariness in favor of spectacle. It's like covering the Mona Lisa in glitter. Like, sure, you added more stuff, and it's interesting, but what the fuck? Go, go clean that up. The angels worked in the first episode because of how mysterious that the show kept it. Then they tried to show them more and explore stupid aspects and gimmicks that the budget just wouldn't accommodate for. Also, they kept trying to add MCU-style humor where it shouldn't belong. Like, you aren't looking at the angel. Why isn't this thing trying to move? Why is nobody taking this situation seriously? Like, they introduced the idea of them stealing voices in whatever this YouTube clip is. I don't want to click on this. It'll be like opening the Ark of the Covenant. My face will melt off. Also, the Statue of Liberty is is a weeping angel. It's just that nobody knew since someone is always looking at it. Except nobody noticed this thing walking around New York. Oh my god, who who wrote this? I mean, I found it interesting in 2012 at least. Although to be fair, I was a child. There's like this whole video somebody made. I remember liking it. Go watch it. With that being said, the Roblox game Don't Blink was directly inspired by the episode. Obviously, like I said, Doctor Who used to be really enticing. Not exactly sure where things went wrong, but that doesn't matter. The cultural impact was there. There was going to be a Roblox game on it. You know the drill. So there's two teams of people, the humans and the weeping angels. The humans have to survive until the time runs out. The angels have to kill all the humans before the time runs out. Each angel has a select amount of energy that once depleted causes the angel to blow, to crumble. Killing humans will replenish energy, but flickering lights also depletes your energy. The humans basically just have to work together to not let the angels move. And also one player on their team is selected to be the doctor who can drain the angel's energy with the sonic screwdriver. This game was pretty good for the time. It was sweet, it was simple. It died though because there just wasn't a lot of content beyond the base game. Also, there's an unskippable intro that plays before literally every round and it's really long. As with basically every old Roblox game, this game is broken. You can still play it, but it's really buggy. Back then it was pretty cool though. 
Number four, Stop It Slender. I was actually debating whether or not to put this game on the list because I knew people were going to comment something like, pretty and the game isn't dead, people still play it, Lamau. Come on, look at these players. Nobody cares about the Slender Man anymore. Stop It Slender was just like, don't blink. It was created during an era where people were into this stuff. I admit, I, I wore this as a Halloween costume when I was like 10 years old. Then another kid wore the same costume when, I when he was 12. Loser. I didn't like him. He was mean to me. That's why I'm mentioning it. Slender Man is a tall white man in a suit that makes people go crazy. Or he kills people. Or in some interpretations, he impales them on trees. There was this game in 2012 called Slender the Eight Pages, where you have to collect all eight pages before Slender kills you. It's like a modern Roblox horror game, guys. Find objects in a set location while a monster kills you. The release of another game, titled Slender the Arrival, really helped cement Slender as an icon of internet culture. This game wasn't all that great looking back, it was basically the same premise over and over again, but at least it had a nice story for people to dissect. And people were really into that whole proxy idea. What's a proxy? Well, Slenderman just doesn't kill all his victims, he also turns them into monsters that serve him. These people are the ones who write those weird handwritten notes, not him. Even though he could totally, like, mass produce those pages with his tentacle arms. Stop It Slender was the same concept as the games, really. Your goal is to find eight pages before he kills everybody, or turns you into a proxy. I don't know, they changed this game a bit throughout the years. Also, nobody likes Slenderman anymore, and now this game is kind of dead. The game was nice because even though it was the same thing every time, there were some cool perks to keep you interested for a bit. A pretty solid game. Also, the fact that you can't look at Slender is such a nice mechanic. It's just like eyes from doors, guys. I love doors! I'm dooring all over the place! Uh. Number three, Darkness 2 and The Stalker. Darkness 2 was made by Matt Studio that was famously led by Lawlerus in the early to mid 2010s. A lot of people hated Lawlerus. There's probably a video essay or two explaining it. As for that, I don't really care. He made such classics such as The Mad Birder, Mad Paintball, Mad Minigames, and Darkness. Oh, and Darkness 2. Darkness 1 and 2 are the same thing, really. It's just another one of those round-based horror games where you have to hunt this R6 black guy known as The Beast. God, people love that R6 black guy design, didn't they? Like, people say Doors has good character design, but damn, everybody loved the R6 black guy. So yeah, there's a beast and you have to kill the beast. I remember Darkness 2 being kind of an edgy game that all the cool kids played, but when we replayed it for this video, we realized that it's just a budget version of The Stalker by Clone Trooper 1019. The Stalker and The Stalker Reborn are basically the same concept of Darkness and Darkness 2, except they came first and they did it better. One guy is a scary black guy and the rest of you are humans, but the stalker has a bunch of cool abilities and when I was 10 or 11, I remember making like 12 YouTube videos on this game because I liked it so much. I think this game actually still works, it's just kind of outdated. Yeah, all these games on this list just stopped getting updated and kind of died. They never really made it past the base game. Flee the Facility is a rare gem though. The game never adds anything except adding snow in the lobby when it's winter time and adding new microtransactions. Yet somehow people ate that game up. It's literally passive income. It's the dream. Number two, Deception Infection. Deception Infection is the oldest game on this list and I really liked it growing up. It was made by the same guy who made Natural Disaster Survival. So you know it's heat. This game was made in 2010. That's older than some of you watching this video right now. This game is from an era where game passes and microtransactions didn't quite exist yet. In order to get VIP benefits, you had to buy a t-shirt and wear it in-game. This game didn't even have a proper thumbnail, it's just a screenshot from the game with the logo decal floating in the sky. This was peak back then. What? So the basic premise of this game is that there's infected people and there's normal people, and you have to kill all the infected people with guns before they infect everybody. But here's the kicker. Infected people look no different than healthy people. They're not your normal zombies or ganados. Looking back then, this was heat. Everybody was trying to figure out who the people were. People were locking themselves in rooms and hiding out like Ashley from Resident Evil 4. This game sounded like a fun game to revisit, which is why I revisited it several times. I even streamed it once in 2021, because Among Us was popular back then, and so was a certain viral infection. The stream didn't do well, but we had a good amount of participation at least. Anyways, this game sounds fun in retrospect, but upon revisit, I was brutal Literally taught the lesson that people act far differently than they did over 10 years ago because everybody was behaving super erratically and shooting each other over and over again it was madness I like this game because unlike murder mystery and its respective clones multiple people get a gun and multiple people can be infected so therefore everybody plays an active role you don't have one person with a knife 
one person with a gun, and the rest of the server glicking doorknobs while the two duel it out. Nobody gets to just edge in a corner. Except me, because that was my strategy 10 years ago, and it's my strategy now. The guy who made Stop It Slender made a remaster of this game when the game broke due to Roblox updates. Guess it really is a small world after all. Once again, this game was super popular, but fell to the wayside. Its concept is still very strong in my opinion, and it's not like Stickmaster Luke ever fell off. But can we really trust modern day Robloxians with guns? No. So I'm not entirely sure that this can be seamlessly translated to a modern day audience. Maybe with some minor adjustments. I just find it kind of disappointing how a game that like this existed in 2010, and how we've seemingly had a step back once Murder Mystery was created. Like yeah, these murder games try to spice things up by adding abilities for the murderer and the sheriff, but the innocents are betas who can barely do anything except pinch pennies. Can they even hit the gritty? This game literally got popular because its whole premise is that you get to play the fun parts of murder games. You know, it's called Knife Ability Test, and don't even comment and say, Oh, Bretty, and that's just your TikTok brain talking. Not everybody needs to be stimulated every two seconds. You probably play League of Legends. You're you're not an Epic Sigma. You're a beta cuck with negative Canthal tilt who doesn't even have a duo to queue up with. They can barely even edge after he lost his mewing streak. Shut, Shut your, your bitch ass, ass up. up. That's a load of hogwash. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that, it's the fact that I grew up with games like this, where every person in the game plays a vital role in taking down the bad guys. And oftentimes, it's more fun to be on the human team than to play as a monster. And now I'm expected to play and enjoy a version of these games where the fun parts are basically stripped away. The next game was created in 2017, and it was great, but it came and went and it was quickly forgotten. A cult following still remains today, and the game still works, and on rare occasions, you'll see a server full of people playing it. This game only had one major update, where they added a new map, and then the game was never updated again despite having a pretty consistent player base. It was like the Roblox equivalent of Firefly. You know, the TV show that got cancelled after one season, yet people still can't stop talking about it. And that game is Incursion. Incursion is a sci-fi horror game where a human research facility is under attack by aliens. There's two types of aliens, brood aliens and swarm aliens. Swarm aliens are like the most common, they respawn indefinitely, can only pick up certain items, and basically just M1 like normal Roblox zombie people. The brood aliens are imposters. They disguise themselves as humans in order to undermine them. They can even fire guns while in their human form, although the guns do half the damage and also subtract your points. Well, oh, here, this is the real one. Oh, this is the, the I, I, st uh. God, I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the humans aren't allowed to just camp out in a corner and wait for the rescue vehicle to arrive either. They have to fulfill their needs. You have to find food to eat, a grimace shake to drink, and a bed to goon in. Rest in. If you fail to fulfill these requirements, you lose the ability to sprint, leaving you incredibly vulnerable. Any player who is infected by an alien will turn into a brood alien that mimics their human form. And a player that is killed by an alien, for example, an alien killed them with a crowbar or a grenade, will respawn as a a swarm alien. After the brood aliens are killed, they will only respawn as swarm aliens for the rest of the game, and leading to the brood aliens actually having to play smart. You can respawn as a brood alien if you have a perk though, that gives you an increasing chance to respawn as a brood alien depending on the amount of damage that you've done. The gameplay loop is just so nice. It's like Reason to Die meets Among Us meets Deception Infection meets Murder Mystery. It's a beautiful combination of games, and as we've seen with games like Guts and Black Powder, a game that puts a spin on an already popular game can be successful. Aliens can can also cut the power, there's other cool stuff like being able to throw objects, which is helpful for the aliens since they can't fire guns. It actually leads to an interesting gameplay aspect of having to search for items to pick up and throw as an alien, or search for items that aliens can use in general, such as a crowbar, a fire axe, or a grenade. If you're a brood alien, you can literally stay in your human form the entire game, and prey on the weak and single out targets by finishing them off with your fire axe. There's just so much possibility. The game's existence makes me sad. I and many others had genuine appreciation for what this game did alone, and what it could have been. This game wasn't like Roses where the developers made a small, subpar game that looks nice, promised to add more, discontinued the game, and now everybody remembers it as this game that had so much potential. No. Roses was not going to happen. There's just no way. That game was a concept that everybody judges it for what it was going to add. But Incursion was not that at all. The full game was already there. Incursion wasn't a demo, it wasn't one of those Roblox games that stay in alpha forever. It was released as a full game, after a little bit of beta testing of course. In terms of what they could have added onto the game with new updates, they could have added new maps, new alien types maybe, maybe skins for the swarm aliens, new items, new perks, maybe make some sort of handheld scanner or something. 
since barely anybody ever uses the stupid alien testers. I mean, Deception and Infection had those, and I didn't even mention them because nobody used them back then. Especially in a game where you'd instantly infect people just by clicking on them. In Incursion, there's these alien scanners, but they have to have the power on to use them, which gets cut pretty frequently. That's why I'm saying that a handheld scanner would be helpful. Also, there's an alien consumable that has like a 51% chance of skinny rizzing the scanners, but nobody uses that shit. So yeah, it would make that useful. Oh, oh, wait, I don't testers. trust these people. You know how I had a little faith that Deception Infection could work today? Well, this game kind of gives me hope, because not only are you instantly reprimanded for killing, for attempting to team kill, there's also a thing called Justified Team Kill, where you can kill people that are purposely hurting others, or turning off the power. This mechanic is beautiful. This game is beautiful. I think we finally found Shangri-La after a hundred years? And I, and I forgot to mention, this game had game passes and microtransactions, and people bought them. People love this game. I've literally seen people playing this game that have 100k points. I personally have 37k, but that's just my little Sigma flex. So why was this game left to rot when it literally had a consistent fan base? Can you guess? I bet you can. I bet you can. It's it's money. Incursion was created by the development group known as Secondhand Studios, who, at the same time this game had 400 players, their other game, Cruise Ship Tycoon, had 3k concurrent players. It's no surprise that they abandoned this game in favor of making something that was undoubtedly making more money. Now, game developers, I'm not going to judge you for following the money, but I will in a second. It's just natural temptation. It makes sense. Everybody has to make money in order to survive. Unless you're a crackhead, they somehow pull through. Now, disclaimer, before I get any hate comments. Incursion is your property. You made the game. You own the game. You can do whatever you want with it. But come on, people love this game. It's not like Incursion was stealing players away from Cruise Ship Tycoon, which, by the way, was abruptly discontinued as well in favor of Retail Tycoon 2. And your fans also seem to be upset about that. You essentially created the Roblox equivalent of Abandonware. People loved your game, they wanted to see it succeed, maybe even influence other games like it to be more interesting. Take a look at The Undead Coming, the 2021 version. This game, just like Incursion, was an infection game, and it only got like, one major update. Why? because they kept hiring people to work on the game who would write like 10 lines of code and then just leave. So then they had a bunch of spaghetti code that prevented them from updating the game. Also the game, just like Incursion, was PC only. The lack of updates as well as the game being PC only caused the game to understandably rot. However, just like The Undead Coming, there was a dormant player base. Despite all the game's issues, people still saw potential in The Undead Coming. Somehow. Now here's the kicker. Prepare yourselves, you're about to blow. So instead of letting the game rot, the Undead Coming devs sold off the game for like 75 or 90 USD. Now this initially caught me off guard when I was told this years ago, but when the spaghetti code bit was explained to me, I, I understood. And guess what? After a year of reprogramming, readjusting, adding mobile support, the game made a spectacular comeback in the form of the Undead Coming Armageddon, and people loved it. They added progression on the zombie team, and they made it fun to play a zombie. But the frustrating thing here is that Incursion almost already had that down years before. They already had alien progression. That already had the framework laid down for it. And that's just what's so sad to see about this whole situation. This game is seven years old, only received one major update, and people are still talking about it. That's insane. Seven years? That's like 29 seasons of Fortnite. What the fuck am I reading? I think I speak for a lot of the Incursion community here, but I think selling off the game to a passionate developer would have been a good call. Actually, I don't know, because the original Undead Coming developers don't seem very happy with their final decision because they, like, privated the gun models once the game became popular. Despite the fact that they sold the game, like, like okay, so hear me out. They sold the game and the things that are, you know, a part of said game. Why are you hitting this poor guy with some unexpected phantom tax? Should the game be sold off? What do you think? Personally, I think it would be nice. And like I said, it's not like the game is stealing players away from their other games. They have completely different audiences. But sometimes things like this are too good to be true. Actually, no, what am I talking about? I literally just spoke about an identical situation where this happened. Also, just wanted to note something about all of these games. They could totally be mobile compatible. The gun system in these games is literally just the classic point and shoot. No complex FPS type gaming there. And most of these games have limited interaction, if any. A lot of them just consist on touching buttons with your body to open them instead of holding E. Although if Incursion ever adds mobile support, 
Never. Then they could definitely add a few hold eat spots. With that being said, that's my top five uh, asymmetrical multiplayer horror games on Roblox that are dead list. Yeah. Do you, Do you agree, agree with, with our, our list? list? Let me know what you think in the comments. I I'm Bredian, and I talk about niche Roblox games. Please be sure to suplex that like button, subscribe, check out the game's links in the description, and comment for the algorithm. As always, my videos cover niche topics and aren't likely to reach nearly as many people as a video such as Top 5 Balls in Blade Ball or Top 5 Spots to Edge in Weird Strict Dad Chapter 3. Hi, Pichu. So we're recording Pichu. and Da, da like, re reverted back to BO2. Like, his mics... Move, combat, interact. Uh, we need the low-quality Pichu. Oh, Maybe Pichu can be high-quality and Da... Hi! Uh, no, really like shit. It's, <laughs> as soon as he started, it's soon. It's not in like as soon as Da like the Steam thing said Da is playing Bo2. It like it reverted. Ready and going to buy the most obscure weapon. Da, close the door. Da, close the door. I, I got the blick, dude. Don't you, <laughs> dude? You fucking little bitch. <laughs> Oh, make sure you crouch on the top of the bus because there's uh trees. Wait, 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 double points. Oh, okay. Pichu. Okay. Oh, Pichu. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, Pichu, you broke uh -oh. it. Uh oh. Oh. Did anybody else just crash?